<laughs> uh, okay. So hello everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Um, at first, I was afraid that the room is going was about to get empty, but fortunately, you're plenty now. Um, so since we're so little left here, let's make it more intimate. Let let's do it. I don't know. Q and A based. So uh, please feel free to interrupt me whenever you want. Uh, I'm going to ask questions, and uh, the one who gets the answer to those questions, please contact me later for a prize. OK, so um, I don't know how familiar you are with Bitdefender. Um, I'm going. Uh, left side. Oh, yeah. Left side. Yeah. Working? No? Yeah. Uh, we are a Romania-based company. We were founded in 1997. We have uh, 15 years of anti-malware experience as Bitdefender, but we previously were known as a, another company called AVX. Uh, most of our offices are in Romania. We have four centers uh, in which we develop and research anti-malware technologies. The first one is in Bucharest, the capital of Romania. The second largest one is in Yash, where we do antivirus research and where virus signatures come from. There, then there is the Cluj office, which uh, deals with active virus control, active threat control, behavioral-based malware detection. And the Timisoara office, which proudly brings us Bitdefender Mobile Security. But other than the Romanian presence, we are an international company. So we are present in most parts of the world. We sell worldwide, with the exception of North Korea and a couple of third world countries. Uh, we have offices all over the world, ranging from uh, the United uh, Arab Emirates to the United States. We have an office in Silicon Valley. We also have opened an office in Washington, DC. Uh, and we have global points of presence. We also serve the needs of 500 million users. We, uh, this is an important milestone for us. Uh, this year we reached the 500 million customers, but we are also one of the most major players in the OEM technologies. Basically, we license antivirus signatures or detection, as somebody called earlier, to different other antivirus vendors. So we are so good in detection that some people decide to rather integrate our technology than build their own one. Now that the marketing part has finished, um, let's go in depth with what I want to address today. E-threat landscape. There's a pretty good reason why we have stopped a couple of years ago building e-threat reports because they were useless. Nobody cared what malware was ranked what place. Most malware were doing the same over and over again, sending spam, stealing information, doing e-banking fraud, etc. They were just called differently and they were operated by different gangs, but their main purposes was the same. At some point, we started losing visibility because most malware was generic, which means that malware A today would install a piece of spam bot. Tomorrow would, would be rented to somebody who, was, who wants to do banking malware. Some other days, it would be used for DDoS and so on. You couldn't pinpoint things accurately. Things have changed, though. That's why I decided to present today the landscape report. We have new threats. And out of these new threats, there are ransomware, exploit kits, and advanced persistent threats. Anybody knows what ransomware means? Come on, I have a prize to give. OK, go ahead. Feel free. How does it encrypt data? It uses the same technology that we are using to safeguard banking transactions, military communications, things that are important to us. And because it uses the same technology that people have developed and tested in time, decryption is impossible in the absence of the private key. So no matter what you do, if you get infected with ransomware, that's it. Nobody can recover your information in due time. It's possible. 
to brute force that key, but it would take a long time. So you're not, you're not going to be alive by the time somebody manage, manages to brute force that encryption. We also have exploit kits. What are they? Similar offensive exploit kits. Yeah, go ahead, sir. With one minor provision, it was the other way around. First of all, they were created by the bad guys, and then the good guys decided to bundle exploits to make it easier, e more easily available to pen testers. But yes, it's true. You don't have to be a skilled hacker to do that. You just need to fork over something around $10,000, and you're in the malware business. And this is what my presentation is about. Malware as a service. Imagine that. You know, your neighbor's kid hacks you badly, and he's not even 12 years old. This is how easy it has become to hack, because malware creation toolkits sell for anywhere between $100 and $10,000. And if you're lucky enough, you can go on a cracking forum and find out an illegal copy. Imagine the irony, an illegal copy of a malware creation toolkit. Basically, somebody spent $10,000, cracked that toolkit, and made it available for anybody to build malware with. It's so easy. Look at the Android mobile landscape. I, I was closely watching what's happening in Latvia. Do you know what, what's the first, the most important, most frequently encountered piece of mobile malware in Latvia? It's called Androrat. It's a piece of Android remote access tool, a spyware kit that, that you can just build with a point and click interface. You, you just basically enter the IP address of the server you want, you want to control mobile devices from, bundle it with a APK, an application package from, uh, uh, from the Google Play Store, and then send that piece of malware to the public. Whenever somebody installs that piece of malware, your Android mobile phone automatically connects to the server you have typed into that interface, and you can access emails, you can download photos, you can send and read messages, you can basically locate users, you can do whatever you want. If there's time I have a video, I can show you the capabilities of a free piece of malware, a piece of malware that you can download for free. Worst thing is that hackers are now acting as a corporation and they have a commitment. They have hourly updates for their software. You have bought an exploit kit. Well, that's it. You get updates. You get free FaceTime technical support via ICQ or Skype. Uh, back in the Rustok days, if you were an affiliate with Rustok, you had five developers available for you day and night. They worked to just add new features for the customers. You could customize that exploit pack however you wanted. It was done in, in one night. You could ask for new features, new modules, new ways to compromise the PC, and you could, you, you could get it. Everything was already included in price. And this is why the malware landscape has exploded during the past two years. Anybody that could tell me how much malware there is on a daily basis or on a monthly basis, You're, you're in the same zone. Yeah, a few millions. I'm going to show you later. But these hackers don't spend this money just in vain. They need to get a return of investment. And the return of investment is like this. For every single dollar paid, you get almost 1,500 times more. You don't need to rob a bank. You just need to buy an exploit kit and some server time on a botnet to send spam to people. Look at the CryptoLocker story. It was one of the first commercial endeavors into the ransomware space. They made $28 million in four months, and this is as much as we could track, because mark my word, 
the cyber criminals realized that using one wallet for all the ransom was borderline insane. They attracted too much difference. And then they started to customize one Bitcoin wallet per infection. And then we lost track of how much money they made. Two months later, they went away. Nobody knows where or why. But I imagine that they have reached a, a critical threshold. They got their money back and they left before police got a hold of them. Maybe they launched a new business. I don't know. CryptoLocker was not actually a piece of do-it-yourself malware. It was a custom-made piece of malware that was used by one cybercrime group only. So the reason I'm, I'm adding it to the malware as a service story is because it was using a network distribution infrastructure that could put a lot of internet service providers to shame. Remember, these malware servers, command and control centers, come and go. They are being taken down by local certs, by the police, by internet service providers, whatever. So they built a network so resilient that whatever you took out of that network, it would come back alive in less than one minute. So it was automatically healing itself. And that network was so good that a lot of people started to use it. A lot of cyber criminal operations started to use the crypto locker command and control infrastructure for their own business. Proxying information, stealing data, uh, delivering updates, you name it. That was malware as a service, actually. The network topology. You are right, a couple of millions. So this is how much malware do-it-yourself gangs create per month. 14 million pieces. Likely 3,000 new pieces of malware every single minute. And it's not brand new because nobody wants brand new. They just want repackaged applications, better obfuscated applications to trick the antivirus engine and making sure that they only run once because this is all the crypto locker uh, lookalikes need only to run once. After that, they don't care if, if they're being detected and deleted. Once they have ran once, they have encrypted all the files, you could safely delete that piece of malware because it's not needed anymore. You are going to reinstall it again to go through the payment process. Once your files are encrypted, that piece of malware is, is dispo disposable. And uh, here's a new story from the lab. Uh, we were looking over the weekend over VirusTotal. I don't know if you're familiar with VirusTotal. It's a aggregated antivirus scanner that basically runs 42 or 44 engines, antivirus engines, competing antivirus engines. You upload a file on VirusTotal and it's going to give you a verdict of who is detecting that file and who is not. A couple of years ago, cyber criminals used to put VirusTotal to good use into benchmarking how many antiviruses would detect their creations and how many would fail to detect them. But then VirusTotal started collaborating with the antivirus industry and sending samples over. Uh, so basically, if my antivirus did not detect a sample but a competing product like Kaspersky detected, it would automatically send me that sample for analysis. And hackers relied, went more and more into the underground using virus total clones that did not collaborate with the antivirus market. They don't even care now about going into the underground forum. They're still using virus total because they can produce more samples than we can sign. Uh, 2,000 pieces of crypto wall have been uploaded over the course of two days on virus total just for benchmarking purposes. We got those 2,000 pieces of ransomware. They never hit the user. This is because every new iteration of crypto wall or crypto locker or Tor locker or however these lockers are called are unique per infection. Um, if I'm sending a sample to you, for instance, 
it's going to be a unique sample never seen before, spe specifically crafted for you. For my colleague, for instance, I'm going to send a different one, and so on. And imagine that you send 2 billion spam messages, you're going to get 2 billion different, completely different variants of the same crypto locker. This is what made the industry reach 14 million pieces of malware. And it's very difficult from a technological point of view, it's very difficult to keep up with these samples because we're 100 antivirus researchers in Bitdefender. And there's 14 million pieces of malware to look into and sign during the course of one week, or one month. You cannot do that. And still, we achieve great results. This is how it looks overall. Uh, if I get the pointer, I'm going to, sh to show you that this is the baseline in which do-it-yourself malware kits and zero-day exploit packs have appeared on the market. And the rise in the number of infection has grown significantly. So we have 435 million viruses known to date and a lot more that we, are, we do not know of, or at least not AV test knows of. And we project that almost 500 million viruses will be on the market by the end of the year. This includes, of course, samples that do not work on modern operating systems, samples built for Windows NT or Windows 3.1, whatever. But it's still an impressive amount of malware. And yet, back to the marketing part, advertising. Uh, yet we, did, uh, we, we managed to somehow pull off a technology that allows us to still qualify well in tests. Um, we have been number one for quite a while. Uh, we are specialized in detection and we have achieved a lot of accolades from the industry, ranging from AV test to AV comparatives. We are presently number one along with our partners. But how do we do it? We have three technological pillars in the Bitdefender. We have the Bitdefender Cloud, or as its trademark says, the Global Protective Network. Its mission is to detect, anticipate, and neutralize. How do you detect and anticipate? We use natural machine languages, we use artificial intelligence. We do a lot of research on files. We are basically sitting on big data and we make sense out of it. We know that if you've been to this presentation, to the presentation before me, somebody said if it looks like a duck and it quacks, uh, quacks like a duck, then it's probably a duck. Uh, well, most of the times the malware that we're seeing does not look like a duck and does not quake like a duck, but it is a duck. So the, the main objective of the Global Protective Network is to anticipate new threats, to learn from how malware looks like and how it behaves, and to make sure that the verdict that it gives on a file is good. And then the antivirus, based on the verdict, neutralizes that threat. This cloud system is no, not your average cloud system architecture. It serves, it serves one, 11 billion queries a day. It's much more activity. It sees much more activity than Twitter, for instance. And we compete with some of the mid-range social networks in traffic. It's a huge hassle to hold it alive, especially because other than the 11 legit billion questions that it answers a day, there are a lot of hacker groups trying to take it down because there's no fun if somebody isn't attacking you. There's a three second immune response time to new threats. This basically means that in three seconds, if I have detected a piece of malware in Latvia, for instance, my customers in the United States or in Singapore or in ever, uh, any other part of the world will know about it and be protected against it in relatively 
short period of time, three seconds. That would be the bit defender. Thank you. Thank you for this presentation. I wonder if uh, if you'd install Bitdefender or Mars Rover, would it go there in three seconds? Huh? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. How how much is it? Oh, it's it's, it's a long, long it's way, way to very go. Long. Uh, so unless we invent quantum travel, uh, please. I have a question about the feedback you get from your clients' uh, computers. Uh, I've been using computers for over 25 years, and I don't know how many antiviruses I've used, and I use them. But I'm trying to think back. When was the last time, if ever, did my antivirus program say, oop, I just got a virus. We erased it, and you are safe. Uh, you must get this information from your clients. How much all these countermeasures, you, you, you come up with the signatures, how much feedback do you get from all those computers that they're catching something? Because I, I haven't gotten anything from my antivirus saying, oh, here it is, we, we stopped your virus, so you're safe. Uh, well, we have a saying in Bitdefender, um, there's no need for me to tell you that I've done a, bad, a good thing. It would be much easier for me and much fairer for the user to tell you, oops, I failed. Sorry about that. Uh, we don't show messages in the interface anymore. So as of version 2012, you don't get ever notified directly by the antivirus that something has happened. You get a monthly, a weekly report in which I'm going to tell you how many threats I have fought off, what type of threats have, have been, where I have detected them, but that's it. I'm not going to pop up and disturb you from your productivity. I'm not going to steal your time just to to tell you that I've done my job. After all, you've paid me to do that, right? Uh, but, but the user, you know, this could be something I could make my own antivirus and uh, here I'll sell it to you for 100 euros. And it's a nice game to play, isn't it? Uh, if you don't give feedback to the user, well, I bought a nice car, it can go from zero to 100 in 10 seconds, you know, we can see the demonstration of the effectiveness. It's kind of uh, uh, strange, you know, I'm not saying your product is bad, but it seems what you're saying now is your product is catching those viruses in the, behind the scenes and the user yes. doesn't know, but maybe user will think, I don't need a virus anymore, antivirus program, because yeah. it, it catches nothing. I understand. It's a trade-off because some people would like to know if there's any ac malicious activity on that device. Some other people would not want to see that pop-up. Imagine that you're in the middle of a presentation and all of a sudden something jumps, you know. Well, I, I don't want to advertise my product on your slide in front of your audience. Uh, so yes, we, we, are, we, we tried to do test cases, realize, see what the customer wants. And the opinions was, were split. Somebody wanted information, somebody wanted to be left alone and undisturbed. So we took the middle approach, okay, I'm going to deliver those reports on a weekly basis or upon a request. If you're going in the interface, you can see malicious activity in, in real time, but I'm not going to interrupt you from what you're doing. Okay, thanks, we have a next question. Definitely. Uh, okay. I personally was surprised to see that we have uh, almost 500 million viruses existing. So uh, back in my day, th there was a thing called polymorphic viruses, and we counted them as one virus. So is it what you're talking about when you, when you say 500 million, or is there unique 500 million viruses? No, it's 500 million polymorphic variations of a couple of families of malware. Uh, so basically, it is, it is a distinct type of virus because to the antivirus it looks like brand new and the antivirus does not quite care what's inside. It's either you're missing it or you're detec detecting it and dis disposing of it. So there are 500 million pieces of different variation of the same year after year old virus. Okay, thanks. Do we have another question, final question? So if you have uh, 14 million new samples a month, so how big is your uh, 
sample file? Um, I've never counted those pieces of malware, but I can tell you that the database tables that hold information about the virus, like uh, its fingerprint, uh, its first scene, last scene, comparative detections from the vendor, has about 37 point something terabytes. So just metadata, nothing binary. I it's pff, incredible. We, we basically got all the viruses that are in production because we exchange samples with industry, uh, let's say competitors, right? Uh, we, we have uh, malware, malware uh, feeds from, co in the, from competitors, we have uh, malware feeds from partners, and we have malware feeds from virus total. We basically see everything. Is there a follow-up? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I wanted to ask about the uh, size of the signature file that you s give to the user. Well, it's relatively low uh, because we're not relying on signatures anymore or so much as we did in the past. You know, somebody at some point, Symantec, said the antivirus is dead. Well, it, it is dead the way it used to be with signatures and stuff because you know you you cannot sign malware as fast as it shows up so we had to rely on different tricks heuristics uh, behavioral uh, protection layered defense mechanism that include signatures heuristics behavior just to make sure that one of those layers will detect and, pro and, and protect the user so signatures not so much it's i don't know the, uh, the Bitdefender Total Security Kit alone has about 300 megabytes. It is 300 megabytes large. So it, it couldn't be that, that blacklist that you're telling me of is m minimalistic. So we don't need a 40 terabyte cluster to run your product. That's, no. that's good news. Yes. Okay, <laughs> great. Uh, round of applause for Bogdan Batazate here. And of course, a gift from DSS for the speaker. One second, let me just get rid of that. <laughs> okay. Thank Here you. you go. Much appreciated. Thank you. And if you, you want to continue the